ladies and gentlemen, friends and strangers, mom and dad, please welcome to the stage this year's wonderful coaches, Elastinen, Krista Kosonen, Roope Salminen and Saara Aalto. And guys, you can go there and sit down. Um, as this is a fireside chat, so I was thinking about bringing you guys something. Hopefully you had some snacks before, but if not, uh, I have some marshmallows. So, <laughs> Robe, you're a smart man. You can start opening. And there you go as well. You have sticks too, so you can share these with others. Uh, we had some issues with the fire though, but you can imagine, I guess. So the first question, I don't, I don't mind sitting down yet. So the first question goes actually to you guys. Please raise your hand if you have learned something new today. Quite many of us have. But coaches, this question goes to you. Um, what have you learned during the Talk to Talk trainings and during this day? Elastinen, you can start. Yeah, my session was, uh, it was a weird experience with the guys. I was talking about ret rhetorics. That was my topic and how to make your, bring your point through. And it was a day that I, I had just had a, like a photo shoot of my own and I was in, in the middle midst of uh, releasing a new single. And I apologized for the guys for maybe using them as a shrink as I was telling them about my problems, <laughs> my, uh, my fears and my uh, like, uh, uh, thoughts at the moment, but uh, maybe they're just stuff that a performer goes through, so I guess the guys got something out of it, and I've learned a lot, uh, such great personalities, a lot of guys that I, I think will make an impression in this country and in this world uh, later on in their careers and in their lives. It's been a privilege. Thank you, Ella. What about Rob? Uh, well, I echo uh, everything uh, Kimo said. Um, I think uh, what I've learned most about uh, is, is courage. Uh, when I when I saw these guys, my um, my coaching session was all about improv. It is a very hard uh, thing to do, theatrical improv and um, uh, en entertainment improv. is a very very complicated thing, and it's a very new thing to a lot of these people. And uh, I was very very proud of them when they. Um, jumped uh, in the deep end and uh, really gave something from themselves and um, I, I already saw a lot of progress during our two hours together uh, it was uh, it was a phenomenal uh, session um, and uh, and sitting here today watching these guys give out uh, probably the performances of their lives uh, was very very enlightening and uh, I was I felt super super proud Thanks. I, I believe these guys are going to have so much more to come as well. Uh, what about Sara, Krista? How do you feel? I mean, we had so much fun at our session. We were, I mean, I made those guys sing and they were amazing. <laughs> and we were shouting and, and singing and, and we had a catwalk and we were like strutting the catwalk. And, and you all had such amazing personalities and I think today that was like the best thing I could really, really see. I mean, I, I just saw your personalities coming through and that was amazing. You were really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you're all really good. That's, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of um, jealous <laughs> because um, I think you're, you're all at least, you know, of course, because I'm a Finnish person, I compare myself to others all the time and I'm very jealous and I envy, <laughs> so I envy all of you because you are really wonderful um, performers. And I, I, I believe my subject was emotion, which was kind of difficult because I didn't really know if it was the emotion in the performer, which I don't really care about. I care about the emotion that the audience gets. But that was really the first thing kind of to, to figure out, like, what, what is this? topic really about. It was really interesting. I, I guess I had this um, idea that, you know, because I've never been to Slush, I, I had to um, I ask my fiance's 19-year-old son, like, so what's <laughs> the Slush? Like, you know, it's something to do with business and all that. So I, I kind of expected these 
uh, speeches that would be like about topics that I wouldn't understand, like technology or money or something like that. And I was really, um, I got my, like, I got a lot of faith, you know, about the future and about, you know, you guys. Like, all the topics were so personal and also, like, nothing at all what I have figured, like, but that's just, you know, stupid me. But I was really just impressed by, by the topics, by the personality, um, and, and by your courage. And um, that's, you know, I, I got a little bit emotional <laughs> after that day. So um, it was just wonderful. And I, I have a lot to learn. Thank you, guys. Um, as I described, this is probably one of the most scary things I've, I've done in my life. But you're professionals, so... Describe all of us the last time you were not just anxious, but the last time you were afraid before coming to the stage. And how did you overcome that feeling? Well, um, the last time I remember being like deathly afraid was before my first uh, live uh, television uh, broadcast. Uh, it was uh, back in 2000, 2015. Um, I hosted uh, the UMK competition, which uh, Sara just won. <laughs> so congratulations Amazing. on that. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, but I, I was I was the host of this UMK competition where we select uh, the um, the uh, the Eurovision contestant for for Finland, the representative uh, for the Eurovision contest. And um, I remember we we shot um, the trailers for it and we shot these inserts for it. Inserts are these little things that are pre-shot that you put on the live show and we've, we've, we've been shooting that uh, show for um, two and a half months I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know I, I fitted all my suits and everything and I got my, my scripts and then um, uh, 30 seconds to air was uh, the last thing I kind of remember. I remember the, the, the studio guy saying alright 30 seconds and then we're live and I remember my heart beating so fast, I, I thought I would literally die. And, and I, I remember thinking, if they had uh, Heike Pasanen right now in full, in full setup, and he, he came up to me and said, like, yo, Robo, you don't have to do this. You can just, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll take it from here. <laughs> I would have given the, the, the opportunity of my life away. I would have said, all right, Heike, please do it. I, I wasn't cut out for this. And I remember feeling so insecure. I, I didn't... I didn't feel like I was a good performer at all. I knew what I had to do, and I had just I went through the motions. And the only thing I told myself for the first five minutes of that live broadcast was, "Man, I suck! I suck! This sucks! This is the worst uh, thing ever! I'm the worst host of all time." That was me two minutes ago, you know. Yeah, but that's that's how you feel, yeah. right? And then yeah. you go through the motions, and you realize actually the audience is pretty forgiving. Like they know it's your, you know, you're not a professional at this yet, and uh, and they they're not looking for faults in your armor. They're not um, looking for reasons to roast you, right? And so uh, I learned that, you know. A trial by fire, I think. I just had to do it because I was, you know, I, I signed the contract and I was like, hey, it's months away. And then 30 seconds after, um, you know, uh, before it happened, I got, I got really scared. Then, you know, I just had to do it. And then after I did it, I've never been scared um, of, of any performance in my life after that. So uh, I think uh, you just got to go and do it and realize that you didn't die and you're not going to die the next time either. Hmm. <laughs> Glad you're here alive. Uh, wh what about Sara? Uh, you seem, well, what was the last time, like, you've been in very, very big competitions, but what was the last time you were really afraid? This, this is really hard, actually, I can't remember, uh, but I learned my lesson very early. I think I was maybe, I think, 14 years old or something. So, um, when I was 12, I took part um, into a piano competition. So, I, I played these certain songs on the piano. And one of the songs was my favorite, and I used to perform it after the competition. So I was quite like, you know, too confident. I was like, I know how it goes. I've played it on the competition when I was 12, and I can do it. And I was 14, and I had um, a piano concert, and I, I didn't rehearse enough because I thought I knew it. And I started playing. It was like very, like Bach, like very, like melancholic, and do 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 do. And after two first chords. I didn't remember anything and I couldn't stop. I was like, I'm not going to stop. I have no idea what's going on. And I was just playing randomly, whatever. Dum, dum, bum, bum. Like I, I had no idea. It was terrible. 
And after that, I, I kind of realized that if I want to perform, I have to know what I'm doing, and I can never be too confident that I actually know what I'm doing. I have to rehearse so well that even if I have a blackout, I know what, you know, it's in my muscles so well that I know what, what I'm doing. Mm. And after that, actually, I rehearsed so much, I, I, never, I was never scared again. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, I, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I've had um, almost the same experience when I was, I think, 10, and I, I took part in a horseback riding competition. <coughs> and they gave me this paper that had, you know, you have to do these certain things. Yeah. And I was kind of like, thank you, and just put it somewhere, and just waited for the day. And I just went there, and basically oh. I didn't, like, I, I saw everyone else, oh, I had to learn something. And I got disqualified, and my mom was there, and I was just crying. Uh, in back of that horse, like <laughs> after that, and I still see nightmares of that. Uh, yeah, I know and, the feeling. And you know, I believe in, like I told you guys, you can never rehearse too much. Yes, exactly. You uh, have to know it by heart. Yeah, and I think when you rehearse, then you will get the freedom, like that. Like yeah. you are on stage and you know exactly what you're doing, and people are asking me, like, Sarah, you are never nervous, aren't you? Like you never look nervous. I'm like, no, I'm not, because I know what I'm doing. Mm. And that's, I, I think that's the main, main thing you have to learn when you want to perform. Yeah. Uh, Ella, you had something. I think I'm, I'm always super anxious before shows. I, I, I get fears and uh, not, not severe stuff, but, uh, but to me, I use it as a workforce. It's like uh, if, if I don't feel anxiety and I don't feel nervous before a show, I think something's wrong. Mm. And the worst so shows of my life have been the ones that I didn't care of, you know, like e even though... Uh, it brings out the best of me, and that's what I was trying to say to the guys as well. It's like you can, you have to like uh, le leash that power and use mm. it to your advantage instead of letting it get to you and, and destroying you. It's like as soon as it starts, you then you when you're rehearsed and when you know what you're doing, then it, it's it's gonna go away. Mm. But for me, it's a way to gain focus towards the thing that we're gonna do now. Just maybe focus for a. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, be like uh, anxious and stuff like that. I, I have uh, a lot of those issues. My friends don't like me before a show, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, feeling. Uh, Robert, do you mind? Go ahead. Yeah, it's like taking a candy from a kid. Uh, Can I say that afraid yeah, sure. is like, that's, you use the yeah. word afraid. I think that's maybe anxious. maybe it's <coughs> like excitement or mm. something yeah. like you because for example I'm every time I perform I'm very nervous and mm. my friends you know exactly. don't like me either and I'm like all over the place uh, maybe the only times that I get kind of afraid is when I have to do something and be myself because mm -hmm. I'm I don't I'm not a very likable person <laughs> my <laughs> my friends can tell me also that and I'm always afraid like oh I have to like be kind of like, you know, I think it too much, but that's why I, I believe I'm an actor because then I have always the, I have the role mm. and I do always put on a role when I go to public, you know, interviewers. Do you interviews. have a role now? Yes, I'm trying to be a much more pleasant and Im <laughs> intelligent person than I really am. I can't really speak out what I really think. Um, <laughs> no, but, but that those are the times that I am kind of um, a little bit afraid, like, will I screw this up? Yeah. Mm. Great acting, Chris. Yeah. great acting. <laughs> Uh, Rope, um, you can have it back actually if you want. But it's all good. All right. Um, whenever I open my TV nowadays, it seems like you're there with a really happy face on and energetic. But I bet that you also have days when you really don't have that energy and you still have to go to the stage. Yeah. So can you share us some small tips and tricks that what could we do to like make ourselves happy again, like just before entering the stage? You really got to be happy. You just got to look happy. So how do you do that? Like, uh, well, uh, well, it, uh, I'm gonna keep this very, very brief uh, because um, there. I mean, I could probably hold a lecture on this, and mm. I actually do hold lectures All on right. this. But um, we're not paying you anything. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I'm sure uh, people have other other things to do as well. The thing is, um, for me, you know, it's a, it's a job, and you gotta go there and you gotta perform your job, and yeah. and it's the same thing for whoever. Um, the, the cashier at the register when you when you you know bought these marshmallows could have just lost uh, you know um, her or his uh, husband or or a significant other or or mm. heard really bad news about um, their own health and they still have to do their job right yeah and you you're just kind of wired that way um, for me if I have a really really bad day um, 
I, I can I, I just push it uh, aside and I think that's a trait that um, most of us actually do have like we, we have a task that we have to perform mm. then you just gotta perform mm. and for me a part of that performance is looking happy and looking energetic and and for me I'm, I'm a really I'm in a really fortunate position to actually have a pleasant job a lot of people have to do that in jobs that they hate mm. and that sucks even more I think but for example um, I don't know if you've seen the show uh, um, Alayaru, which is an improvisation show that we did, and we taped that uh, a whole thing in uh, five days. We shot, um, no, four days, actually. We shot three episodes uh, each day. Mm. And uh, before the first, uh, first day of, of shooting, I don't want to go into uh, too much detail because uh, somebody's going to leak it to Seisko or whatever, but, uh, <laughs> but um, I, I got some really, really bad news um, um, uh, the day before, actually mm. the night before. And I didn't sleep literally at all okay. uh, before the first uh, first day of shooting. And I showed up on set. I I hated my life. I couldn't focus on anything. And uh, and then when you go on, when you when you go on, you just gotta look at your your coworkers, right? Mine were the other actors. I don't want to let them down. They uh, everybody's been practicing for this for months. Mm. Uh, we know this is the week that we gotta shoot, so we we just have to do it. There's no al alternative. So I just looked at them. I told them. I'm, I'm having a really bad day. Uh, I don't want you to feel nervous. I'm still going to be able to perform, but I'm, I'm going to need some leeway from you guys. I'm not going to be 100%. I'm going to be 95%. I'm still awesome at 95%, so don't worry about it. And uh, uh, we talked it out. They said, fine, let's do it. And, and then they just kind of like gave me a little bit of a push. Mm. And we, we went in and did it. And uh, well, uh, it's, you know, to everybody, everybody can judge for themselves if they like the show or not, but I think we did an awesome, awesome job. So. Um, just, just that uh, th that's that's wired in into all of us that if we have a task, we just got to do it. So mm -hmm. it, it's not you can't uh, force yourself to be happy. If if you did, uh, we we could cure depression like that. You can't yeah. do it, but you can do that for a short amount of time. You can appear uh, energetic and happy. Yeah, um, I think you started that by saying I'm gonna keep it short. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I was like cut it, cut it, please. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, don't worry. Um, well, in this you know slush or startup scene or g in general the companies often wonder like, like what's our why what's the meaning of all and as we heard today in the talks it's it's a common thing and this is a deep question but i would like to ask uh this question to all of from all of you but elastin and i would like to start with you uh, um, at least it seems in your music mm. that lately you have uh done well you have been spending a lot of time in front of the mirror and also you've done self-reflection yeah so why do you perform uh, do you want to change something in this world by performing? Yeah, I guess uh, most of it has to do with it being my passion and something I could I can't really see myself living without. I've done it since I was a small kid, performed and and uh, in my line of work uh, is to come to say what Robert just said is like uh, as an artist. Then again, it's like authenticity is everything. So really, the key is to choose choose things as a speaker as well choose the topic and choose the songs that get you into that mood and get you into that feeling and then it's not it's going to be authentic like performing i i don't know how to act in in my music and and I, it's like i can't put on a happy face if i'm not feeling it feeling it so it's going to have to be like authentic and that's why i choose stuff that i passionately feel about that's I only deal with stuff that I'm s super excited and enthusiastic about and that's the key for me to keeping the energy up so that whenever even if it's the worst day of my life it's um, if I get a chance to enhance somebody else's life or uh, like perform or, or do something that I feel strongly about I'm gonna jump at that shot mm. and just uh, try my hardest to be be the best at that moment yeah so, but why do I perform? I think uh, the goal is always moving as you grow. It's like uh, it's never the same. R right now, my values are very different from where when I started. But the uh, the feeling that I get from music it might be this might be the strongest strongest key. Still, it, it stays the same. It's like the best feeling that I. It's like this adrenaline rush. Uh, I I guess these guys had it just now when they finished their their talk. It's like the goal is there and when you reach it and, and when something great comes out it's like the best feeling ever mm. thanks um christian sara i um, I, b I was in both of your trainings and 
to me, you seemed really confident. Actually, the most confident of you all. And um, <laughs> like, not an insult. <laughs> <laughs> not an insult, but um, uh, we have seen Krista this year dancing in Miami and talking Finnish with Ryan Gosling and Saura is going to to the next Eurovision Song Contest, and it, it's just awesome. But how long have you um, trusted yourself that you can and you really know how to perform? Well, um, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> to be honest, um, um, I've never had like a very, I mean, my self-confidence for some reason in acting mm. has always been pretty good. As a person, not so good. Um, but in acting, for some reason, be maybe it's because I fell in love with... Uh, uh, when I uh, first applied to <laughs> Kalli and Lukia, like an art high school, I wanted to become a writer. And it was basically the same thing, telling stories. But then, um, I guess, why I fell in love with acting, one of the reasons is because I got to be someone else. Mm. And maybe that has something to do with it, and that has like the same thing like every time I perform, there's always someone else than me. Of course, you know, I studied acting for seven years, so I basically it all comes from me and I got all these tools and all that. But um, there, there's something like, I know why I'm doing this. I know what I have to say. There's this uh, message that I'm delivering. They're not interested in me, in Krista. They're interested in these lines that I'm giving. You know, the point is to get this thing through to them, whether it's, you know, Finish to Ryan Gosling or or a check of play or or a joke. Mm. That's the whole, maybe I think the confidence comes from there. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, and it comes from also I think maybe we have that trauma <laughs> like of failing miserably because of not uh, practicing enough, yeah. rehearsing enough. So I always rehearse like crazy. <laughs> Sara, when did you uh, gain like in enough confidence for performing? When was the when was it? Uh, well. Actually, for me, it's the same as, as for Krista, um, that when I'm on stage, I'm confident, and I have always been like that. I think I probably because my, my family and everybody were really like supportive, and I was like, since I was a child, I, I just, I don't know, I performed, I, and I had fun. But then, my, my like, you know, at school, for example, I wasn't that confident with people because I was bullied and stuff, so... I was really like insecure when I met new people, but when I got on stage, I was like, I can do whatever I want, and I've always felt felt that actually. Mm. Yeah. Uh, then I would like to. I'm, I'm aware of our time. I would like to ask one one, one volunteer. Yes. <laughs> From us. Yes. Okay, oh. Robe. Um, what is your most miserable failure on stage? Oof. Um, speaking one. too long when I when I told you I'm gonna keep it short. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my most uh, uh, miserable failure on stage, uh, well, uh, would probably be from uh, from third grade. Uh, I literally uh, pissed my pants uh, giving a, a book review uh, in front of class. That's uh, that, that that should probably be. It. <laughs> it, it was third grade too. It wasn't like first. So. But you had read the book, right? I had read the yeah, book. Right. I, had, I had done anything. Uh, I, I, I did everything, uh, but um, I was too afraid to tell uh, everyone that I needed to go to the bathroom, and I thought I, would, I could hack it, and I didn't. So. Mm. All right. <laughs> All right. But let, um, let, I'm, 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 sorry, I'm not sorry for that, but um, let's have another volunteer. Elastin, you seem like one. Yeah. Um, so mine wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> I failed at this, too. Never what? pissed my pants. <laughs> Elastin, what uh, is your... If you have to think right now, top of your mind, what is your favorite moment when you have been performing? I think uh, still it is one of those super anxious times right ahead of my first uh, Harald Valarina show when I was there by myself. And before the curtain opens, that's just something super magical about that. The biggest, I guess, the biggest anxiety and fear and enthusiasm in my life was that, uh, packed into that moment. I, I bet. Yeah. Um, now, audience, I hope you're still awake. Definitely you are. I can see, well, you're napping still. So. But um, how many of you, please raise your hand, how many of you would like to get better in performing? Almost everybody. <laughs> well, then the follow-up question, how many of you know where to start? Not so many. Well, 
mentors, coaches, uh, this is a question for you. How can we, all of us, can become, can become better in performing? What small or big things we could do? Sara, I would like you to start. Mm. Okay, well, for me, actually, performing is actually how you meet people, how you communicate with people. And for example, when you go to a supermarket and you buy stuff, that can be performing as well. Like you, you, you see the, the people, um, I mean the person there, and you, you pay and you say thank you, and you look, at, look, at, uh, look into that person's eyes. So basically that is kind of like what you do on stage as well. You, you walk on stage and you look into these people and you talk to them as you would talk into, you know, as you would talk to whoever you meet. So actually I try to think of performing as just talking to people. Like yeah. practicing it in everyday life. Yeah, you can like you can do that. Like when you go shopping, just be very like confident, let's say hello, thank you, nice to meet you. <laughs> and that is basically what you do when like you all walked here and you were just talking to us very naturally. And uh, actually that's performing. So you can do that everywhere. So next time you can buy ice cream by singing or no, right. You don't have to sing. You can you can just you know just yeah. use your voice. Don't be like okay okay thank you bye. But you can be like hello, thank you. I would like to have an ice cream. Thank you bye. <laughs> you know and yeah. yeah. What about Krista and Elastin and Rob? Do you have something to add? Like concretely, <coughs> where could I go? Where could we go? And what should we do? Well, um, I think it it's well if I think about my job like acting, which I think almost maybe some of the same things apply to kind of performing or speaking. I think it's all about like, you have to know what you're saying. You have to ha have a reason like why you're saying it. If I would stop you in the middle of it, like why you're saying this, uh, tell me now in your own words, you would have to be able to do that, except just, you know, well, this is this. Uh, there's a book, um, the title, uh, it's a Samuel Beckett book that I kind of apply to acting. It's called Huonosti nähty, huonosti sanottu. I guess it's like poorly seen, poorly said. <laughs> mm. You know, I think that's one of the main things in acting. Like, if you don't know exactly what you're trying to portray or, you know, what's the message, then you're going to be bad. And rehearsing, practicing, doing it in opera style, rapping it, you know, whispering it, all the different ways till you know it by heart. Yeah, and then to me it's... Just basics of bettering yourself as a human being is like studying what you did and learning from the mistakes, erasing your, uh, the things that you don't like about yourself, the like about your performance. You have to, like, I've done, uh, like, uh, listened to a lot of recordings of my speeches and thought what's wrong and just analyzing it over and over again every time you do it, like what was good today, what was better, what was worse than yesterday. So did I heard a concrete tip like recording yourself? Yeah, that's Film good. yourself. Yeah. Film yourself. Yeah. Okay, that's a tip. And Write it down. Um, I, I would want to say, I, I would avoid filming myself. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but maybe it's, it's, it's a different, like in acting, it's, it's not good. But don't be afraid of failure. Yes. Go di directly to failure. Because mm -hmm. that's like, think, think of it as your goal. Because that's, um, that's the only way you can learn. Like those are the only moments and you can get better and better. It's very true. Um, um, uh, fa failing is the only time we learn, as uh, as Krista said. I think for for concrete steps that any anybody can take um, is uh, watch great performance uh, uh, from on you know YouTube. You can go on. Uh, you can watch TED talks if you want to be a better talker. You can analyze what they did well, um, what they what they could have done better, uh, what you would say. Um, you can you can read books on performing too. A lot of people say, you know, I want to be a better performer, mm -hmm. and they don't really um, take that much effort. They think you have to go to you know Teatre Korkeakoulu or something. But you can you can you can look stuff uh, that stuff up online. When I got my first um, job as as uh, giving a uh, giving a speech, or giving a lecture, mm -hmm. I read a book called uh, Talk Like Ted and a couple others. I, I can't remember the titles, but Talk Like Ted for uh, for me was uh, very very great. Uh, great book. Uh, I, I suggest everybody reads it if, if you want to um, uh, give out talks. And I didn't, you know, I didn't write it, so it's now no commercial value to me if you guys buy it. But um, it, it has very concrete tips. Um, and when you have um, very concrete stuff that you want to take into consideration, for example, um, the use of your hands when you talk, right? Um, that's not, that's like, 
one half of one percent of your speech. But for your confidence to know that, to know that, all right, now I know what to do with my hands, that could make a difference between, uh, um, you know, your confidence uh, and you feeling very unconfident. Also, uh, one last thing, which I think everybody should do at least once in their lives. Uh, of course, um, this is coming from me, so take it with a grain of salt. But I think everybody should, um, uh, once in their life lifetime, um, uh, attend. An, an improv class because uh, we all do improvisation every day when you when you go to bed today uh, you couldn't uh, ever have predicted everything that happened from the moment you woke up in the morning so you you do improvisation all the time somebody asks you um, uh, an out of left field question and you have to think of an answer on the spot you just improvise it doesn't take uh, uh, extraordinary abilities and uh, in a few hours class you, you can gain confidence in meeting people you can gain new ways of communicating and as Sara said earlier uh, performing is kind of like talking to people I would like to use the word uh, connecting so mm. you just uh, uh, learn a way to connect and also another thing um, perform for uh, a small circle of people just keep doing it and ask them for feedback just uh, take your most honest friends and perform whatever you want to perform for them and then take notes um, you can film yourself too if you want to but that takes a lot of uh, self-confidence I, I would have hated the recordings of myself uh, if I had to see them when I started out but instead I, I told them to friends and they can you know echo it back uh, in a little bit more gentle way mm. so at least a couple of concrete points you can film or not film yourself <laughs> record or not record yourself uh, try it in everyday life uh, don't be afraid of failing and also read books and try to do improvisation. So Send there an improv class. It's yeah, impro class. All right. You will not regret it. Probably he sells those as well. <laughs> uh, just, right. just kidding. Uh, hey, we're all fully booked. So well, at this point, I would like to um, thank you for the like these open questions. But then uh, you have these two papers. Huh. So please take the green one to your right hand, and that means yes. And then you have the red one, and that means no to your left hand. And what's going to happen is that I will ask you in a, in a moment to close your eyes, and then I will have small statements. And you just quickly have to show whatever you're feeling. <laughs> and then after that you have answered, then you can uh, put your hand down again. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, please close your eyes. First question or statement. I'm aware that this is my right hand. Yes, we, we are awake. <laughs> can we trust you? Thank, <laughs> thank you, Sara. Still hesitating. Um, all right, third one. Sometimes performing is shit. All right, thank you for the honesty. Um, I know what I'm gonna be when I grow old. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Can lay lay your down, hands down. Uh, I'm talented enough to be here. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, I have achieved my dreams. Mm -hmm. You can lay your down, uh, hands down. I'm scared of the dark. All right, <laughs> good that we live in Finland. Uh, I like volunteering. Yes, you're volunteering right now. Uh, actually, you can give them an applaud for that. <laughs> Uh, still close your eyes for a moment. I have these are fast questions so uh, statements. I easily admit my mistakes Thanks, I'm addicted to social media Thank you, I'm happy the way I am mm -hmm. And then last three three questions or statements We Finnish people are bad at performing <laughs> Don't worry, it's, it's not that serious. <laughs> then, Finnish people should talk more. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last one. It was easy to choose this year's top three talents. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give a big round of applause to our coaches. <laughs> and at this point, I would like to invite my partner in crime, Sauli, to step onto the stage. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause also to Viliami.